Okay, so I'm going to be doing a, a study titled uh, Foul Mouth Christians. And this is something that uh, a few weeks back, uh, something that happened on Facebook, and uh, I don't know, it just got me really thinking about, you know, how the Bible does talk a lot about how we're not supposed to be using, you know, profane profanity or profane language. We're supposed to be watching what comes out of her mouth. And there was an incident that I'm going to just briefly touch upon in a few photos uh, in a bit. I'm not going to name any names. I try to uh, hide the person's name. But it's, uh, it's something that I felt led to do and, and to study out. Because I know there's a few uh, Christians or those calling themselves Christians in general that uh, actually don't think that's a, a big deal if you drop the F word. And... Uh, I think it is a big deal. And so I want to, before I get into this, I want to give thanks to uh, to Yanni, Merle, uh, James. You know who you are. I want to thank you for sharing the scriptures that you did. And um, I, I'm going to share a lot of scriptures here. So just bear with me. And Merle, again, thanks for sharing this photo, uh, the first one here, where it says profanity is the expression of a weak mind. And then there's a, there's a couple of scriptures here. It says here, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. That's Ephesians 4.29. And the Bible says in Titus 2.7 and 8, In all things shewing, or showing thyself a pattern of good works, in doctrine shewing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech, now, if someone drops the F-bomb, I don't think that sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And something that comes to mind, too, is that, again, like as Christians, uh, we're, so, we're supposed to set the example. So as Christians, we shouldn't... We shouldn't be allowing this, this, you know, perverse language, dirty language, foul language, profanity to be coming out of our mouths. And uh, we're supposed to, you know, you know, you know, set the bar, follow the example of Christ. And to those who have parents, you know, I think we all heard stories, or perhaps this this might apply to you, how you know you, a parent uses a certain foul word, a dirty word. In front of their kids, maybe they get into an argument. Maybe they just out of their bad habit, they drop it. They drop an, they drop the F word, and then you know a lot. Of, a lot of most kids are in, uh, you know, especially young kids, right? You know, they're going to be in a public school, and so you know they'll go use that word uh, with a, with a classmate, with a friend. <laughs> God forbid, like with a teacher, and then there's a phone call that gets home. I know, you know, Johnny, you know what I heard Johnny say today? I don't know what you've been teaching him at home, but he used such and such a word. And that's, you know, that's wrong. It's wrong because our kids are sponges. We're supposed to be raising our kids in a nurture or an admonition of the Lord. Uh, so, you know, we got to be very careful of the language we, we use, especially when we're on children, because we shouldn't be defiling the mind of a child. It's, that's wicked. And so we're supposed to uh, be, be on guard with our tongue, be on guard with our mouth, speak those things that are right, and set a, set a good example for our, our children, for those around us. You know, for a Christian, you know, uh, the unsaved shouldn't be hearing us Christians to be using foul language. It, 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 doesn't, it doesn't look good on our testimony. It just doesn't. So, you know, bear that in mind as well. Now, I also want to say that, you know, I'm not perfect in the area of, you know, bridling the tongue or being able to, you know, keep the tongue um, in, in, like in, in restraint. You know, there's the odd time that certain uh, foul language words come out of my mouth. And I, I know that when I do that, I'm not led by the Spirit to do that. I'm definitely in the flesh. So, you know, it's not something I'm perfect with. And I think if we're honest with ourselves, 
And if we look at, I think it's James chapter 3, if memory serves me, we look at, into that as well, where it talks about how the tongue is uh, you know, uh, like a world of iniquity and uh, no man can tame it. So, you know, when we're in the flesh, fleshy things that we learned as a child, a lot of times we, we learn bad words as a child, right? It's embedded in us. So sometimes an automatic response to a certain stressful situation or when we get angry and we're in the flesh is that a certain word or words come out of our mouth that we normally regret. So, you know, or, or maybe you don't come out of your mouth, but maybe you have it in your head. And, you know, it's not maybe the, it's obviously not the biggest of sins, but it is a sin. God hates it. We're going to get into that. And uh, God um, wants us to have, you know, every thought under control. I actually didn't, I'm not going to go into that in, in Bible study. There's, I think, a part where, you know, you know, keeping every every thought subject, right? Bring it into control. It's, it's a spiritual thing. So the flesh wants to use profanity. And if you're around unsaved people, and I've been around unsaved people ever since I've been a Christian. I think most of us are around unsaved people, be it family, workplace, friends, and such. You know, you're going to have profanity being used. You're going to have the F-bomb being used. And it's just not right. So let's get into the study. I want to show you Ephesians 4.29, where it says, Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. So let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. We're, we're, we're supposed to be using good words. And you know, bishops, the bishop's Bible, just to show you that the word corrupt has the meaning of filthy. So the bishop says, let no filthy communication proceed out of your mouth. But I'll leave it at that for the sake of time. So, corrupt equals filthy. We're not supposed to be saying filthy words. We're not supposed to be saying corrupt uh, words. Those, those, these kind of words, these, you know, the F word, for instance, not supposed to be coming out of her, of her mouth. And, you know, I have here the F word, and, you know, there's different ways people try to, uh, you know, arrive at its uh, etymology. I'm not going to really get, go into that, but, you know, the world knows that this word um, is not good if you if you're dropping the F word you know God forbid if you okay if, if someone doesn't think the F word is bad can you imagine how quickly they're going, to, they're going to get a reality check if they were to drop the F word to their boss you know to tell their boss to go F themselves it's not going to go down well like you know 99 out of 100 times if not even more it's not going to end well unless they're on some kind of really really close basis and and they're allowed to speak like that amongst each other but generally speaking this kind of language is not acceptable can you imagine telling your mom and dad the and dropping the f the f word to them i mean you know if you're young you're probably gonna get a good whooping you know that that tush your bum is probably gonna get a good whooping and you're probably you might even get more right so you're not supposed to be using this word or these kind of, this kind of language. It's just not right. You know, the heart knows. You know, God, the, the laws of God are in your heart. You know, I'm convicted by my conscience. And I'm convicted by the word of God. I see that this is not right. So we're not supposed to be speaking like the world. You know, Hollywood, the world loves to promote, you know, the F word and foul language and filthy communication. But we're not supposed to be like that. We're supposed to be separated from the world. We're not supposed to love the things of the world. So continuing, Colossians 3, 8. But now ye also put off all these. And it gives us a list. Anger, wrath. Same thing. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy. Well, that's a good one. Blasphemy. We're not supposed to be blasphemous. We're not supposed to be railing one against another. We're not supposed to be speaking evil one of another. And that's going on a lot. And that's probably going to be an upcoming study for me. I'm, I'm getting into that. And then it says filthy communication out of your mouth. We're supposed to put off filthy communication. And the Geneva Bible describes the word communication. It uses it filthy speaking. So 
in the Spirit, as we're led by God, as we're strengthened by the Spirit, we're not supposed, supposed we're not supposed to be speaking filthy words. It should not be made, uh, named among the saints. Matthew twelve thirty four, and this is where Jesus hits it on the head, where he's speaking to a group of people he didn't like to very much. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? And it says, because, or he answers, because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when we're using profane language, when we're using foul language, when we're speaking filthy, it's a matter of, a, of the heart. We're not being led by the Spirit to do so. And that was sad because recently there was someone, I'm not going to name his name, someone that was, uh, that was a friend of, of uh, some of my, uh, my close friends, that uh, was, using that, was using filthy language. And he thought he was actually led by the Spirit to use this kind of language. And that just really, it was like alarm bells went off. Like, you got to be really, um, what's the kind of language I'm looking for? You got to be really confused. You got to be really unsure about what the Word of God says in this matter. You know, you've, you've, uh, You've deceived yourself in this matter to think that, you know, dropping the F word is something that the Spirit of God would lead you to do. And saying that, you know what, it's not wrong to use this kind of language. But yeah, it is wrong. So, there was someone that told my good friend Merle to go F himself. Now, when I came across that, like, I was shocked. You know, this is not kind of kind of language I come across, um on Facebook much, especially for someone th that claims to be a Christian. I'm not saying he's not a Christian, but you know, you shouldn't be using this kind of language. I would be embarrassed to use that. But he told my friend Merle to go F himself. I'm not going to look at, uh, I'm just going to go further down. And again, you know, he goes, uh, he starts making fun of Merle, ca calling him a Pharisee. And that's quite ironic because Merle is the furthest thing from a Pharisee if you get to know him. And it doesn't take very long to know that Merle is a man that, that wants us to see the distinction between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The liberty that we have, we're not under the Old Testament. Christians are in the New Testament. We're part of the New Covenant. God's laws are not written in stone in the New Testament. They're written in our hearts. You know, so... We follow the teachings of the New Testament. You know, we don't teach the bondage that those teach that we should be tithing. We don't teach that. We don't teach Sabbath keeping. Um, we don't teach that you have to restrain, uh, keep away from eating certain foods and stuff like that. You know, we don't, we try to follow, Merle and I try to follow what the Bible teaches in the New Testament for us Christians today. So to call moral Pharisee was a, was a railing accusation and a false accusation. Nonetheless, he said, uh, in regards to me, you know, are you know, your f crazy? And I, you know, he covered that up. But and he's you know he's trying to say that you know I've sinned against you because I told you something that you didn't like. Get off the weed, bro! Like, you know, foolishness. It's sad. Um, and then my friend James said something like this. No, it's not something like this, exactly this. When you can't make a point and admit your attitude's wrong, just continue to throw insults. Okay, so then the response back to uh, James was, uh, this person said, In classic Pharisee fashion, you'll strain at a gnat, but swallow a camel. You know, LOL. F, F, and F crazy. And we all know what that is. All of you. So, you know, this is just not right. It's wrong, it's of the flesh, and uh, I want to show you scriptures. I want to show you a lot of scriptures that show us that this is indeed a fleshy issue, a matter of the heart. And we saw that the Lord said, and Christians shouldn't be using this kind of language. So, and just briefly before I say something, you know, I don't hate the person who wrote those things. Uh, I just, I just pray to God that uh, God would show him his heir, and maybe he maybe he'll watch, listen to this video, and maybe, maybe it'll be a help to him. Um, yeah, I love the guy. 
prayed for him and you know God bless him and may may he do many things uh, to God's glory so James 1 26 if any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth or that word bridleth means refraineth not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain so I think I pretty much uh, in so many words addressed this earlier brought this up earlier I think my this person they've deceived themselves their own heart has deceived them and that's why they don't they don't really care about what comes out of the mouth pure religion and undefiled before God and the fathers is this to visit the fathers and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world and uh, this is a great verse and I think it modern you know modern day Christianity is failing big time when we compare ourselves to this verse 27 but with that said I want to read you James chapter 3 because this is a great chapter in regards to the tongue my brethren be not many masters knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation for in many things we offend all if any man offend not in word the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle or refraineth the whole body so we can see how we can easily offend in word and i you know i was offended i think other people were offended and um we're not supposed to be using this kind of language behold we put bits in the horses mouths that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body behold also the ships which though they be so great are and are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whatsoever the governor listeth even so so in like manner right the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth and the tongue is a fire so it's like a fire a world of iniquity a world of sin so is a tongue among our members that it defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature and it is set on fire of hell so our tongue God God knows what comes out of her mouth and what comes out of her mouth is filth is corrupt communication is evil communication God knows that men when not led by the Spirit of God man when not convicted by their you know by the Word of God by their minds by the heart were in terms of the Word of God the commandments being written in our heart when we are left our own devices and do what our flesh wants to do we're gonna speak just wicked wicked things and it not and not not to be for every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind but I alluded to this earlier but the tongue can no man tame it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison <laughs> you know it's that's a, that verse says a lot right there you know I can't tame my tongue on my own I need God's help I'm not perfect like I said I'm not perfect in this area but I certainly don't try to I think I've never used that kind of language on Facebook social media I try to never use it among anyone I'm around so going further therewith bless we God even the father and therewith curse we man which are made after the similitude of, of God or likeness of God so I want to read further out of the same mouth proceed blessing and cursing so now we're going into how we're not supposed to be telling such and such person to go to hell that is a curse God saying this is ought not this ought not to be this ought not to be so we shouldn't be blessing and cursing people we shouldn't be telling anyone go to hell or something akin to that that is a curse and just to clarify you know 
Cursing is not saying, you know, not dropping the F word. That's not cursing. Cursing is, you know, the opposite of a blessing. You know, you know, God bless you and saying, go to hell. You know, God bless you is a blessing. Go to hell is a cursing. So that's what it is. It ha does not have to do with, you know, foul language. But still, this is a matter of the tongue. And so God's showing us here, you know, cursings, cursing someone out is of the flesh. It's wicked. God doesn't want us to be doing that. He says, doth, or does, doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter, two opposite things. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Obviously not, right? I, well, maybe, maybe they're doing certain things like this with all this uh, genetic tampering, but nonetheless, uh, this is not what God designed. This is, this is another thing God's trying to say. Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries? Either of fine figs, so can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man endued with knowledge among you? Let him shew out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. There's no area here for foul language. There's no area here for a wise man to be using cursing. But if ye have bitter envying and strife, in your hearts, glory not. And I'm seeing that going on these days. You know, again, I want to get into this hopefully in, in, in the future, in the future study. A lot of, lot of open strife, railing, false accusations going on amongst Christians, and it's just wicked. And there's no, there's no conviction. But if you have better envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Contrast. You know, the wisdom of God comes from God above, or the Spirit lives, lives within us. But when we speak wicked things, God tells us it's, it's earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Think of the words that should come out of our mouths. These words should be pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Obviously, to me, foul language does not fit in this description. Cursing someone out does not fit in this description. Now, I want to get into the book of Proverbs, because the book of Proverbs talks a lot about the mouth and the tongue. So Proverbs 4.24 reads, Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips. Put far from thee. So in God's built-in dictionary, froward equals perverse. God's saying, don't be speaking perverse things. Put away from thee. How do we put away from, the, from us? But with the help of, help of God. Proverbs 6.12, A naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a froward mouth mouth. So God like in someone that speaks with the perverse mouth, perverse lips, as being a naughty and wicked person. He winketh with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he, te he teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy, and famous verses in the Bible, these six things, remember that a froward mouth leads to sowing discourse so bear that in mind these six things that the lord hate yea seven are an abomination unto him and he lists them a pro a proud look a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood and heart that devises wicked imaginations feet that be swift and running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies and remember the forward mouth and he the sort of discord among brethren moving forward proverbs eight thirteen: the fear of the lord is to hate evil pride and arrogancy and the evil way and the forward mouth do i hate god hates when we say perverse things god hates when we use foul language god hates when we curse someone else going further the tongue proverbs 10 proverbs 10 20 the tongue of the just is as choice silver. 
You know, silver is something of wealth, of value. In contrast, the heart of the wicked is little worth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but their forward tongue shall be cut out. So God's obviously making a, a distinction and a contrast between, you know, the tongue that should be speaking words that are wise and just, how it's likened to silver, and how a wicked mouth is of little worth and shall be cut out. So, you know, um, God hates a forward or perverse tongue. Proverbs 15, 2. The tongue of the wise useth knowledge aright, but the mouth of fools poureth out foolishness. So that's a contrast. That's, you know, God wants us to be speaking wise things, knowledgeable things, things of understanding, things about the Word of God that are peaceable, that are true, that are good, not to be using foul language and such. Verse 4. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. And I think, and I think of that, I think of uh, when the Lord said, um, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. I think of, um, I think of how, you know, when we, when we speak the words of God and we're, you know, we're giving the gospel, this is good. These are good things that are coming out of our life. These are things that are pleasing to the Lord. These are things that lead to people being led to the Lord. But in contrast, when we speak wickedly, what does it say? But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Moving forward. Proverbs 7, 17, 20. He that hath a forward heart. Oops. Go back. He that hath a forward heart findeth no good. And he that hath a perverse tongue falleth into mischief. So, you know, again, forward, perverse you know, when we speak with a foul, foul, you know, when we when we use foul language, we're going to get into mischief, trouble. Again, you know, if you, we probably have heard examples of, or maybe know personally, uh, you know, been around the situation. Again, can you imagine going to tell your boss, you know, to, you know, again, to use the F word, for instance, in, in front of your boss and tell him to go F himself, for instance. It's not going to end well. He's going to get in trouble. Again, to speak to your wife in, with foul language, to speak to a loved one, to speak to a brother in the faith, it's going to lead into trouble. It's not good. And we should refrain from these things because Proverbs 21, 30, 23 says, Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from trouble. So it's a perfect companion verse to above. No, when, when God helps us manage and have control over our tongue and our lips and our mouth we're going to be saved from trouble we're going to be kept from trouble because you know it's tough this you know living in this day and age it's tough for many of us we're living in a very difficult society from being you know uh many people are worked so hard Many people are not being paid well. Many people have a lot of stresses, be it financial, family, spiritual, uh, you know, health, emo you name it, emotional. And, you know, there gets to a point where you just want to just, just let all the anger out, all the built up, uh, you know, tension. And you just want to use foul language and tell this person do that and tell that person do that. But it's going to get you into trouble. <laughs> when I think about that, I think about, you know, the hymn, I must, when you have, when you're going through hard times, it's good, it's good. Talk to someone, you know, let it out, but, you know, don't use foul language, let it out. God knows we need to communicate one another and be a help to one another, you know, be there one for another. But I think of the hymn, of the hymn, I must tell Jesus, you know, I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, all of my sorrows and burdens to bear. We gotta, we gotta bring it to God. Let God, I, I, you know, I'm preaching myself here too. Let God, or in teaching myself, let God, give it all to God. And let God, 
Fill us with his spirit, with his peace, with his gentleness. Let's give God all the worries and stresses and stuff like that. God's the one who's going to help us get through this stuff. We just got to help. We just got to, with his help, handle it in a graceful manner. And it's tough. Handle it with a smile on your face. Handle it as Christ strengthens us. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Which means I can't do nothing without Christ. In the end, it's going to lead to trouble. So that's what I got, pretty much. Just a little bit more. I have here something that Merle wrote when we were discussing this issue. To me, about foul language and stuff like that. To me, this truly applies. And he quotes 1 Corinthians 13, 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. Just think of all the, all the times we use you know, foul language. It's usually when we were a child, we learned the, the bad words. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. You know what? Think about this. When you become a born-again Christian, put away the fleshy, fleshy kind of uh, mouth. And, you know, when you are when you become a man, you got to start behaving, thinking, and talking like a man. Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be always, or always, with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And that's from my friend Merle. That's from Merle, my twin. And uh, he's, you know, he's spot on in this. And so I have here also... Going back to the Lord, I'm almost done. Matthew 15, 10. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand not that which goeth into the mouth defileth the man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth the man. So again, foul language, perverse language, it defiles a man. And other things. And it comes, you know, it comes, it's a hard issue. Titus 2, 7. And all, I read this earlier, so I'm end with this. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works and doctrine, showing on corruptness, Gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. That he, that he that is of a contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. So this is what I got. I don't want to make this any longer than it is. So um, as Christians, we should be using profane language. We should be using language that is... Uh, of the world and is accepted in Hollywood and promoted and people think it's cool to use that kind of language you know you just gotta hang around young people or be around young people at a certain age and they love dropping the words that we as Christians should you know hate hate the words not hate the sinner hate the words hate the kind of language and be a good example so let us let's uh Let's put on Christ, because Christ would never use this kind of language. And for instance, you know, this, you know, some people think the word, you know, dung is, is a wicked word or piss or hell. But these are Bible words. You know, every word of God is pure. So if you find a word in the Bible, it's a good word. It's not an evil, wicked word. So don't, I don't want people saying hell is a, is a profane word. But in the same token, I'm not going to go tell someone to, you know, go to hell. I'm not going to curse them out. But the word hell in itself is not an evil word. It's a word that God gave us. It's in his Bible. And again, piss. There's nothing wrong with the word piss. You know, dung. I think we know all that is in, in our modern, modern vernacular. That's not an evil word. But, but we still need to bear in mind that Jesus wouldn't use certain words. We shouldn't use certain words. And we know what these words are. We've heard them. We probably still use them from time to time, but we should be we should be knowing better, as the Word of God teaches us. So thank you, this is Vasily Spill. Hope this this would be a blessing to you and a help. Uh, God bless you all. Love you all. Bye for now.